Hi, this is Vivian Vandeveld. Welcome to chapter 40 of Allison, Who Went Away. There will be three performances, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. A couple hours before Thursday night's dress rehearsal, I start wondering again how Connie ever talked me into this. Friday night, as a whole room full of girls tries to primp all at once, Connie, who's been asking the same thing every day for the last two weeks, asks me, did you invite Matt to the dance yet? Not quite yet, I admit. Why would a gorgeous, sophisticated senior, brave enough to drink beer under the very noses of the faculty F, Cardinal O'Gorman, even consider going with a freshman like me to a dance put on by nuns? He's been nice to me, but then he's been nice to all the girls. Connie pinches my arm so hard I squeal. Nobody seems to notice. A lot of the girls are doing warm-up scales and meditation exercises. It's this coming Wednesday, she reminds me. I know, I tell her, rubbing my arm. As soon as I stop, she pinches me again. Ask him tonight. Ow! Stop it! I dodge her, but she shifts to the other side. Ask him tonight, she repeats. Stop it! I warn her, or I'll pinch back. She gets in another quick pinch, but evades mine. It'd be simple to just ask him, she points out. I know, I say. I will. I have every intention to. I think that should make me safe. So I let down my guard and she pinches me again. When, she demands. When the time is right, I say. But just then, Matt Burke bangs on the dressing room door to be heard about the singing, meditating, arguing, and general hysteria that's going on. Five minutes to curtain positions, he calls. I see the manic gleam in Connie's eyes, but I'm not fast enough to clap my hand over her mouth. Wait, she calls out to him. She opens the door despite the frantic protests of several of the girls who aren't quite dressed yet, and she shoves me out into the hall, then slams the door shut so that Matt and I are alone in the hall. Except that we aren't alone. Sigrid is there, too, her eyes bright, her nostrils flared. She spins gracefully away from Matt, and stalks towards the auditorium with the poise of someone who knows she's being watched with admiration. Good timing, I tell myself. I'm sure Matt is delighted to have had me interrupt their little chat. Uh, I say. Matt looks at his watch. It can wait, I tell him. From behind a closed door, Connie's voice calls out, No, it can't! I take Matt's arm, despite his obvious impatience and pull him one or two steps farther down the hall. If I'm going to humiliate myself, at the very least, I can spare myself witnesses. It's just, I say, you see, I was wondering, <clears throat> well, Mother of Sorrows is having this kind of, um, what? Matt prompts me. I close my eyes. Dance. I wait for him to tell me he's busy that day. Then I remember I haven't told him what day the dance is. I open my eyes and see he is looking at me appraisingly. A different look from any he's ever given me before. So, he says, sounding pleased with himself, despite the fact that a moment earlier he was breathing heavily. His cheeks are a hectic red, which is not unbecoming. My language skills deteriorate to pre-verbal level. Uh, I say. When, he asks. I manage to croak out. Wednesday. Here it comes. All right, he says. For a second, I can't believe what seems to be happening. Then I realize he was flirting with Sigrid, I deduce, and she turned him down. That would explain the brief instant he looked flustered. His ego is deflated, and he's feeling rejected and vulnerable. Matt Burke, of all people, needs to be reassured he's desirable even if it's only someone like me who's doing the desiring. Wow, I say. He grins at me and waggles his eyebrows. Thank you, I say. Is it proper etiquette to thank someone for accepting an invitation? What would Miss Manners say? Who cares? Miss Manners isn't going to the Mother of Sorrow's freshman dance with Matt Burke. 
Matt says, I got you that role, you know. I fight the inclination to be silly to say, a roll is good, but a muffin is better. Instead, I just say, again, thank you. He leans close, which is disorienting, without my glasses. I'm sorry, let me say that again. He leans close, which is disorienting, without my glasses, with him coming suddenly into focus. Behind him, someone has set up a mirror in the hallway, and even without my glasses, I get a too clear look at my face. The makeup people have used thick pancake makeup to give me a ghastly tropical tan and have lacquered my dark hair into position with more hairspray than Waukesha used on it. They've slathered, my, they've slathered on green eyeshadow, thick enough to make us have faces for the back row audience, we were told. I look down at my toes, but my mind has gone totally blank. Matt says, you can thank me properly later. He has hold of my arm, just my arm. I'm not sure exactly what's lacking that should be there or what's there that shouldn't be, but his words don't sound playful. They sound businesslike. Maybe I should have made that crack about the muffin after all. I find myself thinking of those stupid analogies they're always giving us on those awful standardized tests. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Favor is to reciprocation as service is to payment, maybe? Still, I think, still. With or without my glasses, he is so good looking. He makes my toes cramp from the exertion of trying to keep my feet planted on the ground. I'm just nervous, I tell myself. That's what's causing that little tug of worry. Matt pulls me in closer and whispers, I know someone who can get us fake IDs. We don't need IDs to get into the dance, I tell him. Not exactly on top of things and trying very hard not to be. I tell myself to stop playing dumb. He's obviously a lot more experienced than I am, and I don't want to turn him off. The ego deflated, vulnerable match is gone. We'll tell your parents we're going to the dance, he explains. We can go someplace good. I want to go someplace good. I desperately want to go someplace good. Can I lie convincingly to my parents? Allison could. I try to nudge Allison back out of my thoughts. I am not Allison. But it's hard not to think of how efficiently Allison could lie and how easily my parents would fall for it, how we would all fall for it. Matt says, and after that, my brother has his own apartment. He wants me, not Sigurd, not Connie, not Allison. Once again, I give Allison a mental shove out of my brain. But in the vacuum that Allison leaves, of all people, Dr. Mahar steps in. How do you feel? Dr. Mahar's voice asks me. How do you feel about that? Flattered, I tell Dr. Mahar. Lucky. Matt is telling me, you can show your appreciation to me, and I can show my appreciation to you. We can have a good time. I pause to sort this out. Has he, or hasn't he, just indicated to me that both of us would need to be drunk before we could have a good time together? Stop being so critical, I tell myself. What I need to figure out is how a normal person would react, a person who didn't have Allison for a sister. How do I feel? Well, I tell myself, I might not be Sigrid or Connie, but I think I resent the implication that I'm that bad. I test out the feeling. Oh yeah, I really do resent that. Girls have begun coming out of the dressing room to take their opening positions, brushing past us, chatting excitedly. I tell Matt, I need time to think. Matt looks dumbfounded, but he recovers quickly. He pulls me in closer and kisses me hard. A kiss for luck, he says. He adds suggestively, for both of us. A whole cluster of girls exits the dressing room all at once, laughing and talking excitedly. 
Connie comes out too, since obviously our privacy is gone anyway. Over Matt's shoulder, I see her smile at how close we're standing. Now that we are standing this close, I begin to pay closer attention to his face. What I took for an excited flush on his cheeks is probably something else, I decide, based on the fact that his left cheek is much rather than his right, and that the splotch is roughly palm-shaped. My mind wanders to some of the movies I've seen in film appreciation, and I wonder, do young ladies still slap young gentlemen who have made ungentlemanly suggestions? Sigurd, Sigurd, I think, how 1930s. So he asked her too, and since she said no, he decided to spare himself embarrassment and effort and to settle for someone he was sure would say yes, someone with no choice. Suddenly, the smell of beer on his breath, beer overlaid by certs, is no longer ex enticing and exciting. I am not Allison, and I figure I am at least as perceptive as Sigurd, so I say the most difficult thing I've ever had to say, including the products of New York State speech I had to give in front of the assembled fifth grade, I say, thanks for getting me the role, Matt, but I'm not that desperate. Matt looks angry, like he's about to protest, but then he becomes aware of Connie standing behind him, and he's not going to embarrass himself in front of her. Matt heaves a sigh. Gee, I'm sorry, Sybil, he says. My parents and I are going out of town then, but I'm sure you'll find someone to take you, and you'll have a super time. Ninety seconds to curtain positions. Catch you later, kiddo. Jerk, Connie mutters. She doesn't know what's happened, but she can see that something has gone wrong. She can't look at me, which is okay, because I can't look at her. I think I left my curling iron on, she tells no one in particular, and she disappears back into the dressing room. Thanks a lot, Connie, I think. Thanks a lot, Dr. Mahar. I know for a fact that no other boy will ever again invite me out in my entire life. I walk backstage from where I can hear the nervous coughs of the audience as though they have anything to be nervous about. Spencer, the lighting manager, is suddenly at my side. Good luck, he whispers, handing me a hanky. I don't know how he's seen my tears in the half light, but he's misinterpreted them. He thinks I have stage fright. Everything will be fine, he assures me, patting my head. My, I'm sorry, patting my hand. The stage manager hisses. The house lights just went up again. Well, almost everything will be fine, Spencer says, and it does go pretty well, at least until the curtain goes up for the opening number. Stay safe and be kind.